Today on Rappler. The Bureau of Correction says new headquarters in Masungi Geo Reserve will push through if experts approve. The Office of the Ombudsman clears late former President Noynoy Aquino and former Budget Secretary Butch Abad of DAP charges. Congress revives talks to decriminalize marijuana in the Philippines. Turkey and Syria suffer another earthquake, this time a magnitude 6.4. Netflix cuts its basic subscription fee to 249 pesos a month. Fans bid Japan-born giant panda Shangshang a tearful goodbye as she returns to China. And P-pop group SB19 appears along South Korean idols in the docu-series K-pop Generation. Bureau of Corrections Acting Director General Gregorio Katapang Jr. says building its headquarters in Masungi Geo Reserve in Rizal will push through if experts can give assurances that the area will remain protected. Katapang says he will specifically consult University of the Philippines urban planning experts. Katapang points to a proclamation made by former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, which designated the land as possible new site of the National Penitentiary. He also clarifies he is willing to reach out to the Masungi Geo Reserve Foundation to discuss the plans. Masungi Foundation earlier said the land was not suitable for construction because of its mountain ranges. In 2022, the National Museum of the Philippines said that quarrying and development can lead to the degeneration of the site. The Masungi Geo Reserve is a conservation area that houses fragile limestone formations. The Office of the Ombudsman clears the late former President Benigno Aquino III and his budget secretary, Florencia Abad, from all charges related to the Disbursement Acceleration Program, or DAP, including gross neglect of duty. Contradicting the stance of former Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales in 2018, current Ombudsman Samuel Martires did not find probable cause for the former official's alleged usurpation of legislative powers. The Ombudsman also ruled there was, quote, no substantial evidence to hold Abad liable for simple misconduct. He says, quote, Abad's actions were only motivated by his desire to fast-track public spending and push economic growth, which Martires says, quote, were without corruption. The DAP was a mechanism designed by the Aquino government in 2011 to ramp up spending and help accelerate economic expansion. Former President Aquino died in June 2021. A House panel for the first time in the 19th Congress under the Marcos administration takes up a bill seeking to decriminalize the production, sale, and use of cannabis in the Philippines. The lower chamber's Dangerous Drugs Committee moves to form a technical working group with a health committee to flesh out the bill filed by former House Speaker and current Davao del Norte 1st District Representative Pantaleon Alvarez. If the government allows harmful products like alcoholic beverages, cancer-causing cigarettes, why can't we decriminalize a substance that is less harmful? The former House leader argues legalizing marijuana in the Philippines would generate wealth the government can use for its programs and projects. Currently, under the amended Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act, cannabis is listed as a dangerous drug. Alvarez's proposal seeks to exclude cannabis, cannabis resin and extracts, and tinctures of cannabis from the list. The proposal is not among the priority bills of the Marcos administration. Another earthquake strikes the border region of Turkey and Syria just two weeks after the area was devastated by a larger quake, killing more than 47,000 people and destroying hundreds of thousands of homes. The magnitude 6.4 earthquake centered near Antakya, Turkey, was felt in Syria, Egypt, and Lebanon. The European Mediterranean Seismological Center says it struck at a depth of 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles. In the Turkish province of Hatay, Turkey's interior minister reports three people were killed and more than 200 were injured. The death toll from the quakes two weeks ago rose to 41,156 in Turkey and is expected to climb further. Netflix cuts the prices for its basic and standard monthly subscription tiers from 369 pesos to 249 pesos for the former and 459 pesos to 399 pesos for the latter. The subscription platform makes the announcement via an ad featuring Filipino girl group Sex Bomb Girls singing a version of their song, The Spaghetti Song. The advertisement quickly gains traction online and shows the group's members in various costumes from popular Netflix shows such as Wednesday and Squid Game. Prices for the mobile and premium tiers remain the same. 
the price cut comes as Netflix begins to roll out password sharing limitations in some countries, wherein subscribers are required to register a primary location for their subscription, with those viewing outside the primary location being required to pay an extra fee. Netflix faces competition from Disney+, Plus, HBO Go, and Amazon Prime Video. Fans bid Japan-born giant panda Shang Shang goodbye as she sets off for China from the Tokyo Zoo where she was raised. Shang Shang is a hugely popular attraction at Tokyo's Ueno Zoo since her birth there nearly six years ago. She is sent to China under an agreement where giant pandas are loaned to zoos around the world, but China maintains ownership of any such loaned bears and their offspring. Some 60,000 people applied for 2,600 spots to see her for the last time on Sunday, February 19. Media chronicled her journey with public broadcaster NHK even live-streaming footage of Shang Shang's cage at the airport. A crowd also gathered at Tokyo Narita's airport to see Shang Shang's plane carry her away. P-pop powerhouse SB19 opens up about being influenced by the global K-pop phenomenon in their brief appearance in the K-pop Generation documentary series. The five-piece act is featured on the fourth episode. The group's leader, Pablo, talks about how the group was formed and how they went viral and gained fans and followers. Josh, meantime, shares they really want to break into the music industry in the Philippines and globally. That's what we're doing right now, and we're very lucky and fortunate that we're, we were able to do it uh, slowly but surely. K-pop Generation explores the impact of K-pop in the worldwide music industry. SB19 is the lone Filipino act featured in the documentary series. K-pop artists like Shinies Minho, Mamamoo's Wasa, and group Stray Kids, TXT, and IVE were earlier confirmed to be part of the show. And that's today's wrap. I'm Nina Liu. Thank you for watching. Click the link below for the full story. Follow us on Rappler's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok.